Hey, welcome to Global Topic Live. I really appreciate everyone joining me for this stream today. Without further delay, let me bring in my special co-host, Heidi Brooks, who's the Director of Sales and Marketing with VPC, uh, VPC Sales. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Jim. How are you? Really great. How's your day going so far? Awesome. This is a perfect little midday treat. Yeah, here in Pittsburgh, we're having a little bit of a warming spell here. It's going to be near 60. The sun's out today, and uh, we're going to start getting into more spring-like temperatures moving into the next uh, next part of the week here. So I'm pretty excited about the gets get away from the January, February freezing here in Pittsburgh. So Perhaps We're going through the same thing yesterday, and today it was 60 degrees, full of sun. It changes your whole mindset, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. You know, for those those watching right now who who might not be connected with you on LinkedIn, why don't you cover your background, what you do for VC, VCP sales? Sure. Um, like you mentioned, I'm director of sales and marketing. We specialize in pipeline integrity products. Uh, we currently are the inaugural distributors for three special brands. PCS, SCC, as well as First Composites, and then we carry the coveted Viscotech, viscous elastic coating. And for everyone watching, Heidi and I will be, uh, from time to time, uh, being a co-host on Global Topic Live. I'm real excited to have you join me from time to time and look forward to, uh, uh, to you uh, really um, putting uh, a lot of good questions to our guests and things like that. Thank you very much. No problem. It's a pleasure to be here. So why don't we go ahead and do this? We're going to go ahead and um, introduce um, uh, Jim Shower and uh, James Cross from the uh, Coffee with the Jim and James podcast. So let's bring on the uh, gentleman here right now. And uh, they sent me some. Um, uh, hey, guys, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? Very Fantastic. good. Very good. So let me uh, read a little bit of information that was uh, sent to me just before our broadcast here. So Jim Shower, some fun information on him. Uh, 20 years in oil in gas utilities on the midstream side. Uh, you were uh, recognized in LNG, CNG industry as a subject matter expert. Very impressive. Uh, you live in Florida, so I'm sure you suffered through the winter here. <laughs> it, was, it was 70 degrees. I'm still reeling. Yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. And let's see here. Uh, Jim is an architectural nerd, loves house plans, designed for solar, wind, earth, um, Berm. Berm House at 17. Oh, it was never good. built, but I designed it, though. Very good. Very good. So just a minor footnote there. <laughs> good intentions, right? Yes. Uh, and then James Cross. Uh, James has 15-plus years in the tech market, a past CIO. How about that? Very impressive. Mm, thank you so much. And Chief. let's – go ahead. I said hello, Chief. Uh, <laughs> hello. hello. And let's see here, uh, you for uh, for your company, you lead uh, the brand in, in human resources, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And then this is my favorite part, barbecue smoker nerd. You love to cook outside. I do. I am a big green egg head for those out there, our big, big green egg fans. Um, been Been part of the cult for years now. James, I'm expecting a door knock any time with a sample of this barbecue. Surprise for the show, right? We've, we've done a, a lot more with a lot less, so I think, I think we could definitely do something. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing regarding uh, James is that, uh, you know, you were born and raised in, in the oil patch. So, you know, when it comes to obviously um, the oil side of uh, here in the States, I mean, you, you're it looks like, you know, you were born and raised in it. So any, anything you want to say about your life in that, mm -hmm. that side? You bet. Um, you know, funny enough, for those that maybe grew up, I grew up in West Texas, uh, right in the core of Permian Basin. And, um, you know, growing up, your, your family that works maybe in the industry is like, you know, go do something else. Go do something else. You know, don't ride the roller coaster of the EMP side up. And so I went after technology. And funny enough... After all these years, I ended up right kind of back where I started in a way. So uh, divine intervention is all I can say. Uh, love love the industry, love the family side of it, not feel. We were talking about it pre-show with Heidi. It, um, I may not have got you know been here all along, but I got here as soon as I can. And so thankful to be a part of this industry. I yeah. say that. Very good. And then, uh, Jim, obviously, you know, you're coming from a different side of the in industry sector. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, your background 
uh, with LNG and everything like that? Sure, absolutely. I, I, like we said, I've been in the industry for 20 some years. So I have utility experience, midstream experience. Uh, I was CEO for three years of a LNG company. So I had a lot of firsthand experience with that, uh, running operations, uh, running portable virtual pipelines. A lot of times when a pipeline goes down, um, instead of just having a town go without natural gas, we would bring an LNG and feed the town or an industrial complex or whatever. But I've been in it for 20 years. I know a few people in the industry, uh, just a few. I have over 8,000 followers on LinkedIn. And in my world right now with Energy WorldNet, uh, Executive Director of Strategic Alliances, my world is connecting the dots. And I think that we all know that in our industry, relationships and network are really the cornerstone to everything that we do. And if we can help someone you know, with their path to market, whatever that is, it could be a safety initiative, it could be this example right here, this podcast today, or whatever it is, any way that I can expedite that and connect people in the industry, uh, all the better. We had a fun thing, Jim, when we had you on Coffee, Jim and James, recently we brought up Jane Brown, who is uh, an icon in the uh, NACE, you know, now AMP world, been in it for over three decades, and we just had her on, or we're going to have her on Coffee with Jim and James this week, and, uh, you know, talking about you with her and then talking about her with you is fun. You know, it's just it's just a, a fun industry we're in. We get a lot of things done through our relationships. So real quick, <laughs> you guys are having Jane Brown on. This Thursday, uh, Jane Brown will be on Global Topic Live and talking about internal uh, pipeline monitoring. So a pretty, pretty interesting oh, right. <laughs> timing on all this. Yeah. So, you know, you, you talk, um, Jim, you talk about obviously the connection that the both of you have in the oil and gas industry. Yes. Now, a coffee with Jim and James, you know, when I first got introduced with you, I saw the value of what you guys are doing with your podcast and really spreading out the communication to the industry. And then also the, the, the guests that you have on provide a lot of great insight and helpful tips and things like that. So maybe you could go through and I'd like to know a little bit about the, the genesis of coffee with Jim and James, and then also to what's the mission of the podcast. Let, let me take over the genesis first. I'm going to hand it over to James for the mission. Uh, the, the birthplace was a year ago. We were on the corner of March 2020 and COVID. And in my world, I would travel for Energy World Net 150 nights a year, 175 nights a year, going to conferences, doing presentations, all those things. Then all of a sudden came to a screeching halt. And James uh, and my mentor, he will, whether it's professionally or personally, he is my mentor, gave me a call. And this is like two weeks into it. And I'm shaking, you know, well, not really, but I felt like it. He's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know. I said, my suitcase is packed. I'm ready to go, but I can't go. He said, like, I got an idea, you know, on the back of a napkin, you know, pretty much. And this is it. And I said, how are we going to do this? He's like, we're going to do it like, you know, video like this. I said, me on screen? No, that's not going to happen. So he talked me through it, rubbed my forehead, and uh, we had some good talks about it. And it's funny going back to those early episodes and uh, seeing it. And now, you know, when, uh, when James says or anybody says, hey, can you do a, 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 a video at, in 20 minutes? James and I are like, yep, not a problem. We hop on, boom, 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 and do it. Where a year ago, it's like, okay, we need three days to prepare, and I got to memorize and all this stuff. So that was kind of the genesis of it that, you know, James is really, you know, and his vision, though, and I'm not going to I'll hand it over to him now was how are we going to do great things still in the industry where we used to do it in person in the past during this time, this this little bridge? What are we going to do to still get our messages out there? And with that, I'm going to hand it over to James and let him continue on with that. True professional. Do you see that warm handoff right there? I mean, the <laughs> proof is in the pudding right there. Yeah, it was it was a a really organic thing that happened, and I'll be honest, it started with Jim and I at, at coffee talk really as therapy for each other. I think yeah. uh, more so for Jim. Um, Jim travels. Yeah, you more too, than, though. You too. You yeah, travel a lot. absolutely. Jim yeah. travels a lot, though, like twice as much as I will in a normal year, and so. It was therapy originally for him, but there there are so many gyms out there, as we know, on this call. Um, but there are so many people just like Jim out there that for the first time in their careers have no outlet 
for these things. And so it, it started with the fellowship and really the connecting of those people, because at the end of the day, the conference is great. We can, we can have virtual versions and sit in on sessions, but those receptions and, you know, business happens at the breakfast table in the bar. Those aren't happening right now safely. You know, I mean, there wasn't an opportunity a year ago for that. So that was the first thing was that was going to be our driver. How do we bring that back to an industry that really got brought to their knees a, a bit from that regard? And so we started there. And then as we began doing it and we, we got comfortable, we began to add in new things that maybe we didn't even envision in the beginning. It was really about that fellowship first. But then as we began doing things like seven habits and, yeah. you know, having those real conversations, we realized more people were listening to that kind of thing than, you know, our normal spiel. Uh, it was a great way to put products and people in the industry back in front uh, of an audience, Yep. Uh, create that fellowship, an open dialogue to where some people, we've all been to conferences. Sometimes you look at a booth and you really want to figure it out, but maybe you don't want to talk to the salesman today. We, we've all been there. That's reality. This is a way we can offer that to people without, you know, that being a, a concern or, or something in between, you know, being a broker and then the last part, as we kind of settled in more to that, um, you know, the learning and, and being able to be a platform to continuously improve, you know, ourselves, really, those seven habits and things like that was a way for us to give it all away. And that's something that we've talked about multiple times on our show this year is let's give it all away. You yep. know, we don't know what that looks like, but we know that it'll come back tenfold. And our competitors may listen and write down everything we do and go back and try to achieve it. But, but we believe in the people we have and we believe in transparency and we believe that it will come back to us knowing our industry, right? Knowing our audience, yeah. we've seen it in motion. And so, and then probably the last part, and this has been a new part, which is, and I'm sure we'll cover it at some point today, but is getting involved. Yes. Like a lot of people don't know what happens behind the scenes. They think everything happens in Washington and that we don't have a seat at the table in these conversations. And the really good news is we do. And people have worked on this for the last 15, 20, 30, 40, 100 years have been sitting at tables and lobbying for the things that get across the line. And we're a part of those discussions. It's not a one-sided dialogue. And so that was really the core things, connecting people, fellowship again, give it all away and help people get involved in these conversations instead of just complaining, yep. you know? Yep. So, so that was really where it all stemmed from. James, one thing I want to say is uh, your fellowship really comes across in every episode. Your, uh, I think it was step number two from the highly effective habits. You mentioned giving it all away and, and by giving it all away, you have no regrets. And that really stuck with me and I appreciate the fellowship. No doubt, no doubt. Those That's seven habits are great. Aren't they? All I mean, that. And to hear them come from you guys, but I mean, you've read it exactly. If if you're a learner, if you're a doer, you're going to know the seven habits. So, but to hear it from another perspective, or even I haven't read it since COVID. So, um, I'm a doer, so I've been doing it. <laughs> but to hear you guys, um, your take on it was really neat. You know, and, and we say quite a bit, and James, I go back and forth. If we have one person that learns one thing on the episode, it's well worth it. All the time, and effort, and energy spent is well worth it. If one person could be safer, more productive, better, better ready to tackle life, better ready to just put things in perspective, then we've done we've done a good thing. So yeah. I think we've gotten a lot more than just one. So. Well, the, the, the t I was going to say that the timing of your message, your content, your information, your connection, you know, at the end of go way back in 2019, at the end, we were going into a, a market downturn for oil and gas and then COVID hit. And so we had a one, two punch happen. You know, now we have a, a new in administration and I'm not going to get political and I don't want us to get political, but obviously some things have been done to, to take certain assets off the table, you know, Let's talk about the, the current state of, of the oil and gas industry right now. And I know you guys have a good pulse on that. What, what's going on out there? 
James, you want to lead off or should I? Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, you know, in my 20 years in the industry, plus all the years of my life, I remember, I mean, going back to the 70s, you've seen different administrations and different policies and, and things go up and down and differently. And I mean, there's kind of that wave. So I think right now we're, we're very early into it. There have been some things recently, you know, in the from Washington that, you know, changed some pipelines and some, you know, thought processes that are, you know, definitely concerning. Um, and we also look at, you know, alternative energy. And I brought up that house that I designed when I was 17 as an example. I, I am a natural gas guy. I believe in it. I know it. I understand it. It's safe. It's reliable. It's abundant. It's here. I lived in Minnesota for 20 years and I cannot imagine trying to go through a winter up in the north without a gas furnace going. And that that would go pretty much 23 hours a day on a, you know, minus 20 degree night. But, um, you know, it, 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 you know, you look at all the things that are being in the news right now, and I think it's important to take a look at, you know, diversifying, you know, our, our you know, energy, how, how we're grabbing energy. That, you know, don't put all of our eggs just in natural gas. I mean, it, it's almost like a 401k. You want to diversify portfolio. And I think it's important to, when we look at energy, to look at that too. Being in South Florida, you know, solar is probably a pretty good thing for me here. You know, up north, natural gas is the way to go. Um, you know, maybe along the coast, some wind power, depending where you are, some hydropower. I mean, there's all these different things. But I think there should be, in my opinion, a good blend of energy resources and sources. Um, yeah, and I, and I think, the you know, obviously what recently happened in, in, in Texas is a, probably a good example of that. And then also, too, the impact of, you know, regulations and restrictions and things like that. So we, you know, we need to have kind of a... Uh, a balanced approach when it comes to it, because, you know, th th look at just oil, for example, a lot of our products are from pharmaceuticals. You can't just get rid of oil completely, um, but there has to be a good balance. Yeah. Yep. Jim, yep. You recently had the uh, president of Southern gas association on your show. And one of her quotes uh, stuck with me during the Texas outages and uh, which she said, now is the time more than ever to pull together natural gas industry professionals to ensure we are telling a compelling story to reinforce natural gas as part of the low carbon future. So reinfor reinforcing natural gas, people on LinkedIn like myself look to you three experts for this. Um, so I really appreciate your conversation with her. Um, Suzanne, I believe is her name, and uh, I really follow uh, Southern Gas. They're pretty um, diplomatic in the way they release their information. And uh, that, that to me was a very strong quote because it's important for you guys and for myself to reinforce natural gas, to not make it a competitive, but like you just said, make it a strong option because some places or all places can't do without it right now. So, or even in the future, I believe. Right. And Heidi, you that's a great point. And Suzanne, definitely, uh, and the SGA, what they're doing over there, they're good friends of ours. And yes. uh, if you haven't been through it, a great program is the Natural Gas Champions program that they put out. And it's very much that thing right there, is how to become a champion for natural gas where you sit. So in other words, look, we're, we're out here saying that we need a seat at the table and be diversified. We, the largest percent of our company is based around natural gas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, but we also realize that natural gas will, will be on the back end of other injury energy as well. So we realize that if you, even if you do away with it from the public perception behind the scenes, things still have to be made. You know, those plants yeah. still have to run and all that. So yeah. When, when you go through a program like Natural Gas Champions, it's bringing it down to meeting people where they are. We're not going to be able to bring everybody along. We realize that. But are we doing everything within our circle of influence to help bring that conversation forward? Are we moving it forward? Or is it they, you know, stab that flag in the ground and we're done? Mm -hmm. And it teaches you exactly that compelling stories you learn how to write your elevator pitch in a way so that when someone does have that kind of dialogue that you feel comfortable getting involved and say you know what i like anniversary dinners where 
we put a steak on the, the propane grill, you know, and, and I like a warm shower in the morning and sitting in front of crackling fire at night, you know, so that, so that it hits them where they are. And it's not just, it's right. It's safe. It's the only way. Instead you have a, again, it's a two way conversation and that's all it does. It empowers you. And it's a great program. Um, and that's where we're living is, um, we're not saying again, we're a natural gas company. You know, we, we, we make our money this way off of operator qualifications and training and technology and compliance. But we also realize that what's happening right now, although it is, we would love for it to continue for a hundred, 200 more years, the way it is. That's not the way the dialogue is going. So are we going to be a realist or are we going to step back and throw up our hands and throw a fit about it or right. be a part of the conversation to keep that dialogue moving forward? So, you know, looking at, um, you know, technologies and innovation. So, for example, you know, remember way back when fracking was just it didn't seem feasible because of costs, you know, and now the technology and the innovation really leaped up to the point where it, it did bring that onto market. You know, what technologies and innovations do you both see coming for the oil and gas industry? Yeah, Jim, you want, I'll, I'll take it, the tech guy, right? The nerd. Yeah, I'm going to be like, well, let me tell you about my tech experience. Oh, it's a <laughs> yeah, so uh, let me get yeah. off the support call so that I can answer this question. Um, well, here, here's what I would say. Sometimes we get complacent, right? And this is just in general, right? When things are going our way or, or whatever it may be, we get complacent. And sometimes we need positive disruption. And I know some people would look at a pandemic and I agree the cause of it all is not, you know, a positive cause. But what I'm saying is from a business standpoint, I feel like our industry may have become a bit complacent. And so this disruption had people step back and say, what if you couldn't physically travel there? What yep. if you couldn't, Yep. be on location you know what can you monitor you know corrosion from afar well of course you can there's companies that do it and this is how you do it but it, i think it was very eye-opening we this is a great example right <laughs> a year ago jim kunkel if you would have said hey i'm gonna have coffee with jim and james on and <laughs> heidi will be there co-hosting we all probably would have got drug tested on monday right i mean like <laughs> it's it's the simple reality that innovation. I mean, we're here because we had to make a move. Most, maybe Jim, you were great. You were doing it before, but what I'm saying is, coffee with Jim and James wouldn't have been here probably because we would have been complacent, and kept doing what we've been doing. So when you bring it up a level and you look at an industry, we're 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 having a disruption phase to where we're really questioning, you know, can people work from home? That's a simple thing. I know we have manual labor that still has to occur, but a lot of jobs, that's a, that's an innovative approach now. And now your talent pool just grew three, four times. It's more competitive now. Right. But and I, I, James, James hit on that because that's a big thing is that the, the barriers that we used to see 18 months ago are now no longer there We're we're having, you know, employees that can be anywhere and it seems seamless, like we're sitting right next to each other. And that's a big key. And let me just jump in and you hit on this too. And I and will bring in the, the generation, my generation, you know, a year and a half ago when somebody says, let's, you know, have a zoom meeting, I'd be like, there's no way let's do what we always do. Get on the phone. And I, and James knows me, I lived on the phone, lived on it all the time. Nice. Now I'm getting more comfortable where I'm having discussions with people in their twenties on a video conference and it's like very comfortable for me where, you know, at that time, had I not been thrown in the swimming pool, so to speak, it would have been, I'd still be, you know, let's talk on the phone. So. Right. Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting time. And, you know, we live in an OQ world, operator qualification world. So yeah. we're really trying to qualify the workforce out there to get them out. What we're seeing, we're seeing changes even within that sub segment where, we're seeing virtual performance evaluations and things like that to where before that was taboo, right? Everything had to be in person, but during this unique time, yeah, we had essential workers in, in, you know, in the field doing things, but we had other folks that were trying to navigate that. And again, that disruption, although it, the core of it came from something negative, it's now challenged us. And I think we're, we'll see a wave 
of innovation come out of it. And we're seeing it already. I yeah. mean, not that we weren't doing it before, some, but now it's become more a bit more mainstream from the products and services throughout the sectors. Absolutely. I, one of my favorite quotes from the last year was, um, adapt, uh, in adversity, adaptability creates opportunity. And that has proven very true. Um, one of my notes for today's discussion was it has made um, a lot of us in the industry work harder or some of us or emphasize people that already were. We have some uh, with my company uh, that I work for, um, some game changing technologies and pipeline coatings. And that was something I was really excited about because I think now more than ever, especially with newer pipeline projects, if there's halts or anything, the existing pipeline's going to be more, uh, that capacity is going to become more valuable. Um, so pipeline coatings obviously are important and, and the innovation there is going to be just as important as the rest of the game. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Jim and James, you, you, both of you are influencers. So let's, let's talk about how my others. Wife, my wife said that the other day and I giggled. <laughs> um, I got a book in the mail. Somebody sent me a book and she goes, and it was just free. You know, sometimes it happens. Um, <laughs> And so I got a book, and I, I said, oh, I got a book. She goes, why would you get a book? And I go, I'm sure they probably want me to talk about it on the show. And she goes, oh, my God, you're an influencer. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's talk what a little happened? bit. Of, yeah, let's talk a little bit about, you know, influencers. And, and also, too, you know, obviously we're coming, you know, knock on wood, we're, gonna, we're coming out of this pandemic. There's a lot, of, a lot of great subject matter experts out there, but a lot of them are not vocal. They're not really out there talking all of us on this stream right now we are are people who are talking to our various industries and things like that and we're being recognized for that and that's great but we need to have more individuals to really talk about the technical stuff to talk about the industry and talk about good things and you know obviously linkedin is a great platform can you have any advice for people who are thinking about doing what we are doing let me let me hop in first and i'll hand it over to the 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 expert on this. I, I, I think, you know, everybody has hit on it and I want to say the word education and that, you know, the, whether it's energy, energy choices, um, educating as far as being an influencer, you know, helping people to understand the industry, going out and being brave and taking that step to yeah. go online and do something, you know, that's, that's the first step. And, and it, it may sound funny, but, you know, on Coffee, Jim and James, every episode, I always start off with a wacky story or something. And, and people that know me, they're like, oh, that's just Jim. Well, what I do, why I do it is because I want everybody to laugh a little bit at me, take their walls down a little bit, look, look at me and say, oh, if he can do it, I can do it. And so it may be seeming very, you know, you know, silly, so to speak, but there's a strategic strategy behind it. I want people to feel comfortable and look at me and say, if he can do it, I can do it. And we want that because we want people to be out there saying something that will make people safer, you know, more educated in the industry to help them, whatever the case may be. So um, we all can be influences, whether it's with our, you know, our family, our neighborhood, our church, our industry, whatever the case may be. We would just encourage people to you know, bring forth the good things. So that's, that's my thought on it. Yeah. Now, and, go ahead. Yeah. I, I think Jim's a great example of it. And, and we say it, we joke around about it all the time, but you know, when you get out of your comfort zone, that's, you know, that's really where the magic happens. And I think all of us have done that, you know, have taken that leap and, and I would even turn it around to say the guests on our show are taking a leap more so than we are now, right? They're, they're the ones in that kind of, oh, I don't know if I can do this, but one, one thing that Jim tells them all the time on our show, before our show, we always have a big pre-show thing. We should re really record that and, and put it out because that's where all the magic happens. But, right. <laughs> um, but it, we would also have to have a lot of editing. In there. So Jim, uh, Jim always tells people, it's like we're at a conference and we're just talking. Yep. And once they kind of get that part, the anxiety levels drop, the stress yep. drops, and we have a you know a real conversation. A lot of people don't know it. Jim and I actually, even before this show, got on a Zoom call before 
honestly just to loosen up because you you get this high level of anxiety. It's funny to see the word live up there and how much anxiety it gives you, but really and truly we record our episodes in one take. So they're not live out there for the world, but we record them all in one fell swoop and we do this every day. And I'll speak tomorrow at a, at a virtual conference live, but that little sticker, wherever it is up there somewhere (laughs) um, that, you know, that makes it very real for some people. And this is maybe not their comfort zone, but Jim Kunkel, it's so hard with so many gyms in here. Um, we, you, you hit it with, we all have something to offer someone. Yes. When we go back to giving it all away, whatever you want to put a label on it yep. is you're, whether you know it or not, you're probably an influencer for someone. Social media makes it a little more, you know, ridiculous and, and, you know, coin the term a little bit, but you're influencing someone. And a lot of that depends on where you sit, which a lot of that depends on where you stand, right? So if it, you're probably doing it anyway, this is a platform. We've created an audience of some people that would like to share our stuff. We're super blessed for it. But at the end of the day, we go right back to that North Star. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to connect people. We're going to give it all away, you know, and and try to to create some kind of semblance of a norm for us. And one last thing in that, in that realm is we always went into this is how are we going to take this on the road when this is all said and done? You yes. Know, this Good. is great right now. Cause this is all we have, but we pray and hope, you know, safely, albeit that's our vision is to make the world a safer place to work. We don't want to jump the gun on anything, but once it's safe and we are back out there, how are we going to make this transcend what we've created here? And I believe we can. I believe there's a space for it. And I think it'll be a lot more fun. It'll probably be live a lot more. And we'll probably have a lot more bloopers. But I believe this thing has legs beyond where we can take it to a show. We can break some of that monotony. We can join into the happy hours. We're, you know, we're hosting an exhibitor hour tomorrow for a conference. As, you know, in, as weird as it sounds in character, which is not really what we mean, but as Coffee with Jim and James. Because yep. people see the value in it. And this is, you know, as sad as it sounds, as good as it gets right now. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> this is the best it. we can do. This is as good as it gets, James. I just, uh, yeah, one quick thought you hit on it. We go to conferences and there could be 400 people at a conference. You have to remember, too, there might be 4,000 that couldn't attend that conference. But if we could, you know, layer in a little bit of a hybrid, you know, uh, virtual aspect with the live conference. So instead of just 400, you know, now we could maybe hit 4,400, you know, in some compa- uh, capacity. Good point. Very good points. Uh, I think that's pretty much the questions I had for you guys. So, I mean, uh, anything, last thoughts yeah. or in closing uh, out this interview? I was going to turn it around on you, you two <laughs> okay. influencers yeah, as well, it. right? I mean, can't we just, we can just take over the show, right? Um, <laughs> you do it. So, well, James, we're excited for you to be here this week. Let me tell you a story, James. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Exactly. But, but really, it, it's a weird thing to think of, but it obviously has legs, like we said. Um, how does it feel on your side? The transformation, I would say, over the last year. I know your idea stemmed before that, Jim. But what, what, how has this last year been for you? And how does it feel to wake up and think, I'm doing a live LinkedIn today? So, you know, over a year ago, I started Global Topic on my YouTube channel and it, it's been very successful for me. And and you you both of everyone on the on the, on here in the live stream watching the live stream, they know how prolific I am when it comes to LinkedIn. I really am a true believer in LinkedIn. And so I've had a lot of people say, "Hey, you need to look at taking what you do. Can you take it live? Can you really offer some special events and things like that?" So it, it's what's weird about this is once you have people really asking you to do things. And I love giving back to the industry I work in. I really enjoy working in the corrosion and coatings industry. But I also recognize that I'm going to be 55 in May. 
and that I have to give as much as I can to the industry to help help promote it, to help educate it, to help inform it, but also to lay, lay out there a story for the younger generation. In my industry, and Heidi works in the same industry, you know, none of us grew up and said, I'm going to work in corrosion. I'm going to be a you know, protective coatings person. We're all thrown in, into this these roles. And so I feel I'm very compelled to say I need to continue to educate and inform people, but also, too, I want to look at that younger generation so they grow up and they want to be able to take over and be the innovators and be the next subject matter experts in this industry. So I really enjoy this. I'm going to continue doing this. And the, and the great thing is the organization I work for, AMP, you know, AMP recognizes what I do, you know, on my own, let's say my own private, my own personal brand, professional brand. But they're also looking at aspects of, you know, potentially incorporating that within the association, within the organization. So I, I, I greatly imp- appreciate my employer as well uh, and, and really thankful for the industry that I work in. So, well, whether or not you three will, excuse me, believe it, you guys are heavy influencers. Jim K, your your corrosion knowledge and the way it comes across is so valuable. James and Jim, your your fellowship really does come across, and that's also very valuable. I was saying to Jim K before the show, you know, I found you on Instagram and I followed you not for influence, not for any other means, but to learn. I love to learn and your two minute corrosion topics, which have, has now become um, the global topics and now the global topic lives are so informative. You can't, and that's that's free. That's free knowledge that you get by, you know, LinkedIn or Instagram or how, YouTube, however you're found. Um, but I can't speak enough for the pleasure I've had to be LinkedIn connections with all three of you guys in the last year. It really, really has been valuable. I, I, will, I will add actually, for people that don't have their own shows or, or aren't comfortable with hosting like the three of you, um, I think there's some minor or basic points to come across to take advantage of LinkedIn or or to start softly putting yourself out there. And I think uh, um, some of the things that I try to stay true to is consistency, um, value, posting valuable information, respect. Um, you know, it's such a fine line and I'm not going to speak against anyone that has, you know, that private message or anything like that. That's not my forte, but, um, you know, having respect for your connections, uh, like you had said, James, you've run into them and, and you'd had never, we'd never met before. Um, it's important to still, even though it's online to have that respect come across and, and if you're consistent with it, you know, there's. Some people, um, I noticed LinkedIn, you don't get as much likes as you do on other social media platforms. And it's still important to keep, you know, being consistent. And and as long as you're providing valuable content, you're going to get what you're looking for as long as you're um, looking to provide value, I think. I think so, too. There's a lot of lurkers out there. You'd be surprised how many people say, oh, yeah, I'll watch that. I'm like, really? You didn't like it? You didn't share it? I know. (laughs) And they're like, oh, no, that's just not what I do, you know, so I think that's uh, a valuable part. I wanted to mention one other thing that Jim and I are very blessed with, and and Jim Kunkel, you you talked to us about us, uh, sorry, not about us, you talked with this about us, you might talk about it, um, and, and how you had to get in there and really learn, like to upgrade the experience for your audience and stuff. You went and really did a lot of work. Look, I have a design background. Love. I mean, I've put a lot of work into different projects, but I'm blessed now to not have to design every day. But Jim and I have a fantastic team really yes. and truly behind all this. And we, we almost just asked for forgiveness with this whole project. And thankfully it worked out this time. But but there are designers and Amy and Connor in the background that, that do fantastic stuff, turned it into a podcast. We were able to just say, this is what we want to do. And they did it. We have marketing folks back there, Ashley and Kaylee and Scott, doing things and making sure these episodes come out. I mean, there's a village behind us. We'll have a vision. We'll talk about stuff, and they make it happen. And we may drive it, and we may you know, shoot down ideas here and there, but we are blessed with the folks behind the scenes that are doing the work because it's allowed Gemini to really focus on the content to focus on getting, you know, the right guests and the right messages out there. And like what Heidi said, 
if you don't have a true north to shoot for, you know, and you're you're veering off the path here and there to to answer questions and to, you know, is that the right thing or maybe design it. And sometimes you can't stay that focus. They allow us to do that. And I think it comes across in the product both ways because we let them do what they do awesome and we stick to what we do awesome, whatever that is. Um, and but but the end result, I think it shows, and and we are proud of that team. We don't shout them out enough. We do we internally, I promise. But externally, they really. I mean, these coffee mugs, fantastic. We've rebranded three times since we started. We're just continuously improving. And yeah, that's that's cool. Cool. yeah, right. that's, isn't it? I mean, literally in a year, we've rebranded coffee with Jim and James three times. And the, and the creatives, as I like to call them, the designers, they are fantastic. Everybody's fantastic. Without them, we would be, I would be on the cell phone right now calling in because I wouldn't be able to right. figure this out. Right. And, and, and I'll, I'll add one last one, which is groups like this, right? Um, mm -hmm. Jim, you've been a, an awesome partner with us. Uh, the, the guys that chimed in from Upsco, Chad, Joe, Ted, yeah. Um, they've also been fantastic and we stand each other up. And when uh, we get on meetings and y'all are welcome to them, it's like a therapy session for all of us that are out there trying to do something. But uh, we get on there and just, it, we don't cover anything. We don't record anything, but we just talk about what's working and what's not and trying again to continuously improve. And it's awesome to have support like that because sometimes yeah. in our industry, and well, in other industries, I'll say more so that competitive nature comes out, right? You want the best product and how do you get it? And it's cutthroat. Um, man, we all came together really at a great time. And I think our shows reflect that. I definitely agree with that. You brought up a good point. And one of the things that I forgot to mention, support. Support is is so key when it comes to online and and. Yep. And not being competitive, but supporting others. And I, I agree. That was well said. Awesome. It, it comes back. It, it just like uh, uh, the Connection for Life guys, you know, Chad, Joe, Ted. We had uh, Dan Pajak on, the owner of the company of Upsco last week. And what a, what a wonderful gentleman. And the guys kind of Zoom bombed us. We had fun with it. And, uh, you know, people say, so how's that competition going with the uh, Connections for Life? And I'm like, that's not competition. Those are our friends. Mm -hmm. you know? I, mean, uh, I, we, I haven't known them that long. My wife, Tammy, has known those guys for years. And, you know, they all just, you know, it's such a, a, a good click. And they're uh, just the way they, uh, they all interact and we all interact together. And I think there's a common theme, though, too, is that all of us would say, and I'll paraphrase this, but try to learn one thing every day and try to share one positive thing every day. And if you can do that, everybody does that, you know, whether it's on this or in person or on the phone or whatever, you're making a difference. And, you know, in our industry, we always say be safe. And that can always be a, what's that, you know, just a, a word? No, not really. It's, it's a way of life. So when we say be safe or at the bottom of my email, it says, you know, stay safe. I mean it, you know, yeah. try to learn something to be safer. Uh, anything, you know, and if you learn it, pass it on, you know, pay it forward, give it to somebody else. So they learn. Yeah. We, we call it making echoes. Um, you know, be a leader that makes echoes, you know, be that leader that makes a leader that makes a leader. And um, um, I think that, that's our hope, right? I think that's all of us at the core of it. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. I encourage everyone to please connect with Jim and James. Also, check out the Coffee with Jim and James podcast. Great content, great material, great information. Gentlemen, thank you so much for this opportunity to interview you both today. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Heidi, it was so great to meet you kind of in person, but not really. So. <laughs> thank you both. Jim K., thank you. This was a true pleasure for my first live. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, everybody. Have a good uh, rest of your day. You too. Everybody. Stay safe. Oh, 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 oh,